The Harmony Arts Festival happening all this week. Coming up next, we're going to introduce you to an art installation that also has a literally cool function as well. Stay with us. You're watching BT. Now, of course, we're in West Vancouver getting ready uh, to promote again another day of the Harmony Arts Festival. First of all, what a great weekend it was. And I'm having a feeling, uh, Matthew, that your art installation, the function of it, was a very welcome thing for people this weekend. I think so. It was a beautiful <laughs> weekend. So the uh, the shade and the mist uh, provided a nice cooling function to the festival. Now let's break it down. Tell people about what we're seeing here. So basically, this is a project called Vermilion Sands, and uh, it's an art architecture installation that is all about celebrating the entry to the festival. So all festival goers come under through this canopy, and uh, it's also about, as I said, providing shade in the hot August sun. And it's also uh, something to kind of contemplate the relationship between nature and artificiality. So it's uh, composed of a repetitive three-dimensional pattern uh, that each, each form in the pattern has a series of seeds impregnated, planted in it. So it's actually a live, growing installation. And so what, what is the living material? Well, it's, uh, there's two types of seeds, uh, so perennial ryegrass okay. and white clover. So about half of them are clover and half of them are grass seeds. So it's actually an installation that changes and shifts over the duration of the festival. Some of them kind of grow more vigorously, some that are more in the sun get a little bit brown, and this kind of natural aging process is an integral part of the art piece. And then, I mean, it looks beautiful during the day, but at night it truly is a different... At night, uh, each one of the poles that is holding up the installation has an LED light fixture on it, so the light gets cast up onto the underside, so it's really the most dramatic at nighttime. Beautiful, and Jody and Riaz, this mist that it keeps giving, it's not enough to make you wet the way rain would make you wet but sure and here it comes right now it just cools you off beautifully harmony arts festival on through sunday yeah the harmony arts festival where there's many things to do there's music there's culture there's food and oh yes there's wine we're going to talk summer sippers up next with house wine we'll be right back yeah, you know, and in West Vancouver, the weather has certainly cooperated once again with the Harmony Arts Festival, celebrating 24 years. And uh, House Wine, you guys have been doing this, or you ladies have been doing <laughs> this uh, for four years. It's always such a welcome sight to have a nice, cool glass of something, right? Absolutely. <laughs> we're here for you. <laughs> here for me. This is perfect. And here for people out there that are coming as well. We're talking summer sippers. And um, Michelle, you've got some great options for white, which to me says summer already. Yeah, beautiful setting. It's nice. It's warm. I, we have three different whites, something for everyone. If you want something more like light, crisp, and fresh we have a Sauvignon Blanc think you should try some sure and to me that that, that you know is synonymous with summer so live with Sauvignon Blanc on a patio right totally it is a perfect ultimate uh, summer, uh, summer sipper for sure what are other great options so Pinot Grigio I think it's something that people are very familiar with we have the Mirasu from uh, from California um, maybe not as pungent in flavors but more discreet okay. um, and then if you want something richer we have a Chardonnay from Australia definitely more voluptuous a bit more you know fat on the bones I like that um, Love it. <laughs> <laughs> why not and it also, too, as it starts to cool down at night, to me, I sort of think, ah, that's when I want something a Absolutely. little heartier, right? Absolutely. And, Michaela, you have great red options, which I don't think of for summer specifically. But you know what? You should, because you can chill some reds down. And that's the first one that we have here, the Mirasu Pinot Noir from California. Uh, Light-bodied, lots of bright red fruit character to it. But you can chill it a little bit, and it's absolutely refreshing for summer. Okay, mm -hmm. good to know. What else do you have? And then we have the Zweigelt from Kalala. And this is from British Columbia. So Zweigelt is the grape. It's, a, it's quite a rare grape. Lots of uh, sort of wild berry fruit to it, a little bit of toasty oak as well. And then finally, we have the Cabernet Sauvignon from South Africa. Um, so again, a little bit fuller bodied, but still totally friendly on its own. And if you're having a burger, and especially as it cools down at night, it'll warm you up when there's that slight nip in the air. Oh, there you go. Perfect. I love it when we can say that wine can help us adjust to the different weather. <laughs> Thanks very much, ladies. Harmony Arts Festival, of course, on through Sunday. Let's talk weather. What will the weather hold? Oh, it's going to be great. Yeah, just getting ready again for another week here of the Harmony Arts Festival. We know that there's a great culinary options. There are great beverage options. Of course, there's lots of music, but there are also over 50 artisans, including jewelry design. We're going to take a look at these pieces coming up next. Yeah, what a great way to support not only local music, local food, local artisans as well. Over 50 here at the Harmony Arts Festival. And, and Tanya, how great is it that you get to sort of go work in your own backyard? <laughs> Yeah, it's absolutely fabulous. We, I usually do shows overseas. I mean, you know, trains, planes, automobiles, and um, it's great to wake up in my own bed and walk down to the booth, grab a coffee at my little local coffee shop, and, um, and, and have see the tons of old friends. Of all your neighbors, yeah, and you've got some great. great jewelry designs. I'm wearing one right now. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about this piece. Okay, well, this one is um, the flat ebony chain, 
It's made from um, Macassar ebony, which is grown in Sumbawa, in the island of Sumbawa in Indonesia. Um, I work with a master carver who carves my designs for me. I go and work with him in his studio. Um, it's carved from a single piece of wood. And then a lot of my designs, um, you can, they're quite versatile. So you can wear this as a necklace, and then you could also add a bracelet like this, which would then, it, cut, it makes it longer. So you can have a longer necklace. If you want to take this apart, you have the bracelet and the necklace. How long does it take to you, for you to make some of your designs and where do you get your inspiration from? Well, for, for instance, for these pieces, um, I found some rusty chain down at the shipyards on the North Shore at Dollarton Shipyards and then took the samples to my carver. So he copied the, the chain samples. It's a very classic style of chain. Um, I travel a lot to go and buy stones, so I get ideas when I'm um, traveling. Um, yeah, and it's also in the doing. So this piece is just sliced agate. It's electroplated sliced agate with lamb skin. Um, I've done a very large and, and uh, statement piece like this. And what about people that think I can't wear something that big? I can't, yeah. I can't pull it off. Yeah, I have a lot of people come into my booth and think, oh, that's simply too big for me. And, um, and frequently have people try them on and are surprised. They're surprised by the weight, that it's a lot less heavy than they think. And also, um, that it makes them feel really good and confident and elegant. So if it feels good, just do it. Absolutely. And it feels good to support local artisans. Make your way here to the Harmony Arts Festival on through Sunday. Thanks so much, Tanya. Thank you very much. Uh, working on some oysters coming up next as we get ready for the Harmony Arts Festival. Another week of it uh, with Ryan Gauthier. Exactly. Now we've come full circle, right? Because for the Harmony Arts Festival, we know there's music, there's great culture, we've met some great artisans, we've had some wine, and now, Ryan, we're going to have some food. you got a tent food. here. Yeah, what kinds of things are you serving at the Harmony Arts Festival? Yeah, so we're doing halibut fish and chips, so fresh halibut. We're cutting daily. Uh, we're doing a halibut burger. We've got some poutine, some meatballs, some chowder, a bit of everything. And oysters, and oysters by the sea, it doesn't get any yeah, better. Yeah, you can't, you can't beat that, right? So you've got four different varieties. What are the properties of each? So yeah, so we have four different we got the Reed Islands, so it's a little bit of a, a, a brittle shell, a nice clean oyster. We got the Royal Miyagi, which has got nice little cucumber, uh, fresh flavors, uh, parsley finish. We got our kushis, which are a nice uh, buttery texture and flavor, uh, nice rounds out with that white wine that I'm sure everyone loves. Mm -hmm. And then we have our raspberry points from uh, PEI, which is a Malpec oyster, which has got a subtle but deep salty flavor to it. And you know, one of the great things is we have such great access to oysters that to do oysters at home to shuck them is not overly it's difficult. Not, it takes a bit of practice though. Yeah, so I think you should go with these ones because <laughs> they're the easiest. The beginner one, right? Okay. <laughs> so what you're going to want to do is you want to get into the hinge there. Okay. So you're going to have the, the deep bottom part of the oyster down, facing mm -hmm. down. You're going to get the, the tip of the oyster knife in the hinge and then you're just going to kind of get that little crack. Once it pops and then you just kind of lift the bottom up. Oh, I think then, I almost got it. And then you kind of scrape the top of the shell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I almost have it. You know, I'm also concerned about my, my pitching arm. Too, yeah, you we, know? we don't want that to no, get damaged. No, we don't want to get that in there. What, what do you think is the best way to eat an oyster? I mean, some people are very, really purists. They just go, just a little lemon. Yeah, lemon. I like just a little bit of Tabasco even. So once you've uh, shucked it, you want to have minimal Shrapnel? Shrapnel. You don't want any <laughs> shell. That's why these kushis are so easy to shuck. So, and you want that nice plump oyster. Okay, so is that ready? Is that ready to eat? Do you That's think I can all even... you right okay. there. Okay, obviously I'm not very good at shucking oysters, so I'll let you continue you can be to the, do that. Oh, look how beautiful that you is. You can be I, the eater. I like, I, hey, listen. That's my, that is going to be my new job. If this TV thing doesn't work out, I'm going to just be a professional eater, Ryan. Hey. Harmony Arts Festival <laughs> happening until Sunday. Lots of great things to enjoy. And uh, Jody and Riaz, come on. Why wouldn't you want to enjoy a great festival with this beautiful scenery? We were so lucky here in Vancouver and in West Vancouver, right? Okay. Cheers. Mm -hmm. mm.